During their stay at the forge, the Taylors share the cabin of the Carters, friends known in Virginia. Household tasks are likewise shared. And as Mrs. Carter tends her baby boy, Mrs. Taylor busies herself with the cooking, while little Mary Carter winds balls of rags for weaving. At the Fort Spring, Ruth Taylor fills a wooden water bucket. Nearby, her brother John milks the family cow, kept inside the Fort enclosure, along with other members of the Fort's animal population, highly prized possessions of the little frontier community. So life at the fort goes on, with tasks for each and for all. Lye from wood ashes is laboriously stirred into an iron kettle of boiling animal fat. Thus is prepared the soap that is needed for laundering clothes and for other household uses. At the shop of the fort carpenter, Walter Taylor's host, Mr. Carter, is showing him the tools he can obtain here to equip himself for farming. A good, strong plow, shaped by the carpenter's skillful hands, hands now engaged in fashioning household furniture. A broad axe will be needed for hewing the timbers for floors, for tables, and for benches. Yes, the carpenter, just now completing a stool for a fort household, can readily supply a number of tailor's needs. He has helped equip many a frontiersman. Now to locate Taylor's farm site. We'll take old Jim Bradley with us. He knows this territory better than any man in the fort. How's the land around here, Mr. Bradley? Well, now I'll just tell you. If a man plants his land in corn and takes good care of it, he'll get a hundred bushels to the acre. With middling care, he'll get 75, and if he don't plant at all, he'll still get 50. <laughs> they say at the fort that sometimes Jim Bradley does exaggerate just a little. But he scouted this territory years ago, and he knows every hill and stream. <laughs> 